The horse and cart system provides us with a chance to talk about how two objects can exert forces on one another. We are going to analyze these forces using two different tools, the interaction diagram, shown at top, and the free body diagrams that appear next to each object. Let's look at the interaction diagram. As you can see, there are three major objects in this system, the cart, the horse, and the earth. These three objects are interacting with another through a variety of forces. For example, the gravitational force, also known as the weight, is a force applied by the earth separately to the cart and the horse. Newton's third law says, says that this force is also acting on the earth, just in the opposite direction. So just as the cart and horse are each pulled downward by gravity, the earth is pulled upward by gravity. Strange idea, huh? We also see normal forces acting between the cart and the earth and between the horse and the earth. This is an example of a contact force and is ultimately electrical in nature. The electrons in the atoms that make up the cart, horse, and earth are interacting, giving rise to solid contact. We see a friction force acting between the horse's hooves and the earth. This is how the horse can push off of the ground. If the hoof is planted on the ground, we call this static friction. If, instead, the horse hoof is slipping and sliding across the ground, we call this kinetic friction. This is, like the normal force, ultimately a contact force due to electrical interactions in the materials involved. The cart is on light wheels, so we're going to neglect friction forces acting on the cart. The final force we've labeled here is a tension force acting between the horse and cart. Both the horse and cart on pu are pulling on each other with equal tension force, rightward on the cart, leftward on the horse. This tension force is applied by the ropes, and again, ultimately, this force wouldn't exist if the electrical attractions which hold atoms and molecules together to form a solid object didn't exist. Now to address the question that began the simulation. If Newton's third law says that each of these force interactions are equal and opposite in nature, how can anything actually happen? If the cart and horse pull on each other with equal force, how can either move? What we need to do now is look at each object independently and analyze just the forces acting on that object. Let's start with the cart. To make things easier, I'm going to set the angle of the tension force to zero degrees so everything lines up horizontally and vertically. If I click on the cart itself in the interaction diagram, the free body diagram is highlighted next to the cart. We see an upward normal force, a downward gravitational or weight force, and a rightward tension force. The upward and downward force acting on the cart cancel. This means just the tension force acts in an unbalanced way on the cart, creating a rightward net force. If we divide this net force by the mass of the cart, we should be able to predict the cart's rightward acceleration. This is Newton's second law. When we click on the horse, we see a different free body diagram. Here, the tension force acts leftward and is the same in strength as that acting rightward on the cart. But an additional force acts on the horse, this time rightward. This is the friction between the horse's hooves and the ground. The net force is then the magnitude of this rightward force minus the leftward tension force magnitude. If you divide that net force by the horse's mass, you again get a prediction of the horse's acceleration. Let's hit play. Does the horse accelerate? It looks like the horse begins moving. And if we wait long enough, we'll see it start to run faster and eventually gallop. What about the earth? If we click on the earth, we see a very strange free body diagram appear. There are two upward weight forces. This is the upward gravitational pulls on the earth by the cart and the horse, bizarre. And there are two downward normal forces, one applied by the cart, the other by the horse. And there is a leftward friction force applied by the horse. The earth, it appears, is pushed leftward by an unbalanced force. Well, that makes sense. After all, if the horse stepped on a skateboard, 
the skateboard would feel a leftward force and shoot out. But the skateboard moves and the earth doesn't appear to. Well, remember, thanks to Newton's second law, we divide that unbalanced force by the mass to get it acceleration, to get it actual motion. The mass of the earth is so high that the acceleration is negligible. There are a lot of different ways we can play with this system. What do you think will happen if the horse is much lighter, but the cart is much heavier? The horse starts to slip. It can't apply the static friction force needed to accelerate at the specified value. If you tilt the angle of the tension force, this can change things slightly. Notice that in order for the horse to be in vertical force balance, the normal force now has to exceed its weight to compensate for the downward component of the tension force. Likewise, the normal force acting on the cart will now be less than its weight in magnitude because a second upward force is acting on it, namely the vertical component of tension. We hope this is a useful simulation for you.